Hello everybody and welcome to TechLore, where we aim to spread privacy and security to the masses. As security-minded individuals, you've likely heard of something called a password manager. If you haven't, we have a wonderful lesson in our free Go Incognito course covering this to get you up to speed. In a nutshell, password managers enable you to fully own and control your passwords like you never have before, allowing the ability to create strong, unique passwords on every website, which is in theory only accessible by you. And you guys should all be doing this, by the way. It's really bad to reuse the same passwords. The two password managers we frequently recommend to people are Bitwarden and KeePass, two open source password managers that function a bit differently. This video will discuss the differences between them, give you pros and cons, as well as a final recap to hopefully answer which is better for you as an individual. Bitwarden is a password manager with a more traditional setup, matching what other password managers like LastPass achieve. It's cloud-based, allowing you to easily log in from anywhere. KeePass is a password manager with a more unorthodox approach. There is no official cross-community client, it's by default not cloud-based, KeePass relies on a local database file, no internet required, which is just like any other file on your computer, and as long as that file is with you, any KeePass client will be able to open it. You can duplicate this file and now you have two versions of your password database or you can delete it and it's gone forever. No one can open this file unless they know your master password, so just obtaining the file doesn't really expose anything. This was just a simple introduction to each password manager, but each has many secrets and fun tips that don't make the comparison quite that simple. Right off the bat, Bitwarden is convenient. Anyone can create an account, log into their account on all of their devices, then just call it good. Similarly, any changes you make on one device, like adding or removing a password from your vault, Bitwarden syncs those changes to all other devices. It is open source, and most of what you need is free, though it does have some paywall features and functionality, which is kind of expected for an entirely free service hosting data for you in the cloud, though you can also self-host Bitwarden yourself if you choose to, which is its own pro. Bitwarden implements two-factor authentication, open source clients, strong encryption, and some of the best security standards, all of which has been audited and has a transparent bug bounty program to ensure they're staying ahead of the game. Aside from personal use, it also has an emphasis on organizations and families, which makes password management between several people an option with an ecosystem and an entity to back it all up. If you have issues, you have someone to contact and a service you're paying for dedicated to serving you, which some may prefer. Bitwarden is updated frequently to work with your devices to their best potential. It supports the staples like autofilling, browser extensions, importing and exporting data from other password managers, and other things you'd expect to find in a password manager in each of their clients. Lastly, for open source Android users, Bitwarden is on F-Droid. I feel this deserves a shout out, so good job, um, that's awesome. For cons, Bitwarden does involve some trust if you use it as is, out of the box. Despite them implementing fantastic security and in theory, even the breach wouldn't expose your passwords, your data being stored on someone else's computer, aka the cloud, is still less secure than not storing your data on someone else's computer. Obviously, most password managers that are cloud-based suffer the same issue, and Bitwarden is not unique, but they still take some of the best precautions to make this not a huge concern. As discussed in the pros, the paywalled system, this is probably fine for most people using the free version as it still allows unlimited passwords with no major functionality removed, However, this will still turn some people away, just like some may prefer a central entity and a system to help them manage things, others may find this to be a con. As stated earlier, you can self-host, though this will require some knowledge and time on your end, which also helps cancel out the convenience factor of the service, so it kind of goes both ways. Since Bitwarden has a reliance on its own first-party clients across devices, if they implement something wrong, maybe a new UI, new features, or remove features, you're kind of stuck with that, at least officially speaking. So you do have to trust Bitwarden here in the long run, which there's not much reason not to. Just be aware there is a degree of trust in not only the privacy and security, but also the direction they head in the future. KeePass, the first and most notable pro of it is by default, everything is offline and controlled by you. You own your database, it doesn't live online anywhere, and you have the full control to do what you want with the file. 
You can keep it on a flash drive, store it on one machine, move it in a Veracrypt container, or you could upload this to the cloud and sync it across your devices, and it's gonna sync your passwords just like other password managers. We actually have a guide showing how to do that. Similar to Bitwarden, you're getting top-notch security with KeePass with open source standards, audits, even recommendations from pretty noteworthy people, and support for something called a key file, which is essentially two-factor authentication on a file basis. Some clients also support YubiKey and other forms of 2FA. KeePass is extremely powerful. If it doesn't do something out of the box, there's likely either a client or plugin that makes it possible. If there isn't, it's very likely you could probably create something yourself if you really wanted to. We made a KeePass guide diving into several fun configurations and use cases, and of course, people still left some new unique ideas in the comments. It really is limitless what can be accomplished. Similarly, there are a number of options for clients on each device, each with pros and cons. For example, KeePass XC is a more modern and updated client with some different functionality than the official KeePass client. Over on Android, KeePass DX is from F-Droid, though KeePass 2 Android is on the Play Store and has better built-in support for database cloud syncing with services like Google Drive and Dropbox. Because of these options and clients, there's no central point of failure in KeePass, both in privacy and security as well as functionality. If your favorite client stops working or implements something that you don't like, there's likely a different client you can switch to in minutes, and it'll read the same database exactly the same as the last one. To begin cons, KeePass is going to be more inconvenient. If you want cross-device support with real-time updates, your options are 1. Manually sync the database yourself every time a change happens, which is inconvenient and oftentimes leads to data loss if you forget something. 2. By accessing your passwords from a single centralized database, like maybe only having your database live on a flash drive, which has to be plugged into every device to access passwords. Or 3. Connecting the database to the cloud. And 3 is obviously the most convenient, yet it's still much less convenient than a service like Bitwarden if you're going the cloud route. The next issue with KeePass is it has a learning curve. I'm not going to say it's hard to use, because it's not. Um, it's just very new uh, to people because we are used to accounts and KeePass has a different process altogether. I'd really recommend giving your KeePass guide a shot since it does a good job of explaining how exactly KeePass works, which should hopefully help you get started. KeePass isn't an entity, it's a project. So if you're an organization or someone who feels more comfortable with a company backing their product, you will not find any of this with KeePass. If an issue comes up, you'll be on your own or you'll have to ask the community for help. Some people find this to be a pro, but for some it will be a con. The final con to KeePass, and it's very much a 2020 issue, which may improve over time, but I gotta say it, iOS support just plain sucks. I'm sorry, I spent so much time digging through different free KeePass clients, and they all sucked. I eventually settled on Strongbox, which is my personal favorite KeePass client I have ever used on any device. I absolutely love it. Um, KeePassium seems okay as well, but again, you gotta pay. That summarizes the main pros and cons to Bitwarden and KeePass. As for which one is for you, that's entirely your decision and depends on your needs. My first question would be, what's your threat model? If you absolutely cannot store any kind of database or password in the cloud, you're kind of limited to offline KeePass. If you're comfortable with the cloud, but not by trusting a central entity, you can self-host either. And with KeePass, you have a more controlled yet convenient option of using something like Dropbox or Nextcloud to sync across devices, though that's not quite a perfect solution. If you are 100% comfortable with the cloud, assuming it's a trusted provider, Bitwarden kind of wins here, offering a much more traditional, familiar, and convenient experience to the user. And because of that, if you're moving your friends or family over to a password manager, keep it simple, guys, because you're a good friend who cares about the privacy and security, but also their lives. Just move them to Bitwarden, not KeePass, unless they specifically need KeePass for a specific reason, and they're okay with its limitations. On the contrary, though, if you're a person who doesn't want to trust a central entity and would prefer a DIY setup, KeePass will be your best friend. It's not hard to set up, it's just different and new. So to recap, you can't really go wrong with either option. I wouldn't overthink it as either of them are much better than options like LastPass, and you should really question anyone claiming LastPass is more private and secure than these options. Just saying. 
A final note, it's extremely easy to switch between both options so you can test out both and see which you prefer. That's going to wrap up our comparison between Bitwarden and KeePass. Which is your favorite and why is it your favorite? Leave it below in the comments. Also, we really appreciate if you would leave a like below, uh, subscribe to catch our future privacy and security content. We're always posting more of it. And thank you to our patrons and supporters helping us do this for a living so we can keep making content for everybody. You're awesome. Thanks for watching everyone and see you next time. Wow. <laughs>